Hello and welcome to today's edition of Standing Together. My name is Fergus Scarf. You know, there's a wonderful passage of scripture that says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and he'll give to all liberally. Well, this program is going to set many of us free. We're going to be standing together as a God TV family, learning the heart and passion and will of the Lord. But I'm not alone. I may be alone on this couch, but trust me, we have some wonderful guests joining us today. And first and most precious, uh, our colleague Claire Worth. Claire, where are you today? Tell us what's going on. Looks like you're in the living room. I am. I'm in my living room. I am here. Um, I am. uh, It's just so good to be here. It's so good to be with everyone and standing together. I know many of us are in lockdown 2.0. So yeah, I'm back here at home with my family. And uh, yeah, it's great to be with you, Fergus. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from our special guest today as well. Come on, line up the program. What have we got on today? We have got a very special guest, Paul Manwaring, who is going to be here joining with us uh, to talk about his ministry, to have talk about what God is uh, really imparting to him around wisdom and strategy and planning. So uh, I'm really excited to hear about all that is going on for Paul. We've also got our usual standing together in prayer. So important as the God TV family uh, all around the world to stand together, to be with one another, to be faithful in what we are doing and we believe that God is calling us as the God TV team to do. So yeah, we're going to have a really special time of prayer and ministry as well. So uh, I'm really excited, Fergus. I hope you are. Oh, absolutely. If you have not already done so, please go to our website, hope.god.tv and upload that prayer request. Not only will Paul be praying, myself will be praying, Claire will be praying, but our teams around the world will be praying for you. Again, if you go to hope.god.tv, not only can you upload your prayer request, but you can upload your testimony. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We love not our lives unto the death. And thirdly, not just your prayer request, not just your testimony. You can also become a member of our intercessors army. So Claire, come on, kick the program off. Where do we go first? We are going to talk about one of the pillars of God TV. I know many of you will know that God TV, our kind of central pillars that we base our ministry on, is revival. And we are going to see a really short little clip about revival, the importance of revival in our lives, in the lives of others, our communities, our families. So stay tuned, watch this, and we'll be right back with you. At God TV, we call people around the world to repentance celebrating the Holy Spirit by showcasing the presence and power of God. God is looking for a people who will open up their mouth and give him room to move. We are passionate about revival. Father, stir an evangelistic anointing like we have never seen. Our aim is to use media in all forms to broadcast the Father's heart to every nation, reaching the lost, and equipping believers for the harvest. Something supernatural is about to happen in your life. So we thank you that you're raising up a new generation of Holy Spirit-filled evangelists that come with signs and wonders and miracles that see the gospel breaking through. I'm going to take action in Jesus' name, and Jesus is going to do the work. Throughout our history, God TV has broadcast moves of God from around the world, giving you a front row seat of where God is moving in power. Our heart is to see a revived and empowered church bursting at the seams with the power and glory of God to transform communities, cities, and nations. There is still power in the name of Jesus! I want you to leave here with an altar where face to face you meet with Almighty God all the days of your life. The presence of God is coming. This is the moment. Support Revival by supporting God TV. You know, as Claire says, as we sit in lockdown 2.0, I so want to be at those events. I so want to be at those moments experiencing the presence of God among the brethren. Well, 
one of the people that has most been associated with so many revival moves in the last 25 years is a Brit, Paul Manwaring. Paul, thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you. Welcome to the program. Now, I've got, I've got a sort of a tease for you both. <laughs> You are, Paul and Claire, the most strategic people I know. Paul, how <laughs> did you get to become strategic and a holy roller at the same time? Oh, that's, that's going to be a tricky one to answer quickly, but let me give you this. 1991, I was headhunted uh, from, to go and work in Feltham Young Offender Institution that was in trouble, and I was introduced to strategic planning as a result of questions in Parliament. And that took me on a journey in my prison career. And then I found myself in America in 2001 and was able to apply what I'd learned using kingdom principles and now to teach uh, church leaders, kingdom leaders, anybody who wants to bring change to the world, the principles of strategic planning. But in between those two points, there's a whole lot went on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Claire, when I, when I think you and I have been friends for four or five years now, and, and you and I have often had the discussion that, that we don't think enough in our decision making. We don't even value decision making because we sort of value that great sort of moment of the rhema word and all the rest of it. As you hear Paul, and I'm, by the way, I've forgotten that both of you'd work for central government. As you hear Paul, Claire, um, uh, what's, what's the encouragement that comes to mind? I think really just knowing that, I, I mean, for me, I think not only is strategy a, a human gifting, but it's also a supernatural gifting. And I think we can all experience some of that. I mean, you know, Paul was talking before about, uh, in, in a passion translation, talking about that God is also a strategist. And, you know, I really truly believe that, you know, there's, there's so much in scripture that talks about, you know, that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. There is no shadow of turning, you know, he doesn't do one thing and then change his mind. And he's always got a plan. And he's always got a purpose and he's always working and moving and, and you know and he's not random in that there is plan there is strategy and and for us as believers it's it's almost balancing that supernatural discernment understanding and strategy with our human nature and with our with our own human gifting and allowing God to flow through that in us wherever we might be in the world. Paul, as I look at Claire, she's in her house and she's right behind her. She's got plans twice written right behind her head. <laughs> Paul, we want to give you time. We honor you, sir. You, you gave your life to the Lord and became a genuine son in the faith. But really the fullness of your calling is to be a father in the faith. We want to give you some time right now. So many of our viewers, so many of us as believers are struggling in this season we don't know up from down. It is a terrible storm. Sir, please speak into our lives. Take the camera, take the time and, and speak to the God TV family around the world. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for the way in which you, you honor me. Um, you actually got me thinking uh, when we started talking about 25 years and, you know, that takes us to 1995, if my maths is okay. And that, I believe, was the year of the Father's Day outpouring at Pensacola. And it's just an extraordinary 25-year journey that both Sue and I have been on. Um, I would find myself visiting Pensacola in 97, find myself in Argentina in 1997, and uh, in 2001 find myself in Bethel Reading and become a part of the senior leadership team. Um, and then brings me all the way back um, to Europe via a series of extraordinary moments and events. So this 25 years um, matters to me. It, it, means, it means so much uh, to me. And, and, and God TV obviously has led us through so much of that. But to speak into this moment, how, how do you speak into this moment? I want to start with one specific uh, piece of encouragement and strangely um, it has the word plan in it which I hadn't really I hadn't planned that um, you know let me just quickly go back to this planning strategy conversation just for a minute let me just put a couple of uh, dot a couple of I's and cross a couple of T's I hear people say I don't plan I'm led by the spirit that is not a good idea 
that in fact it doesn't make any sense the holy spirit is the great architect so if you're led by the spirit you're going to be the greatest planner the world has ever seen so let's just put that one in on, on the page let's also say that our god especially right now we've got a global problem let's let's make sure that we're aware of this our god has has global strategies he's he talked global for god so loved the world that he sent his son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life that was a world strategy what about this the psalm uh, 67 says that the whole earth may know his ways habakkuk 2 14 that the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of god and we're about to celebrate christmas and i'll guarantee every one of us will hear this phrase peace on the earth our god is a global strategist and it's important that we realize that in a pandemic he he's not intimidated by something that affects the whole world because his plans are for the whole world but here's how i am viewing this moment i i want you to get this into into the inside of you because the news the media all of all of that is coming at us with messages of fear, et cetera, et cetera. But do you realize that this book, this wonderful Bible, you quote verses, I guarantee you, if you love Jesus, you quote verses that were written into or coming out of captivity, exile, imprisonment, wanderings, and journeys. And Jeremiah 29.11 is probably the most famous of them. And let me just jump to it and read it properly so I don't butcher it, which I often do. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity. Plans to give you a future and a hope. That was not written in a college dormitory. That was not written in a news studio. That was written by Jeremiah, a letter to the people of Israel who were in captivity. That was the message. And so here's what I believe. I believe that we have been invited into an epic season on the earth, a season that marks us and marks this earth, and God will use it for good. One of my core values is he doesn't send bad stuff but when he touches it, he makes it beautiful. He didn't send this, he didn't cause this, but he is touching it and he will make it beautiful and purposeful in your life. And so uh, that's where I, I begin with this. This is our privileged moment. And I do believe that he is marking us. And, uh, and the other place I would go, and I don't know whether you want to jump in or jump ask in, questions jump or whether you want in, me please. to rant for a little bit. Rant. I'll rant for a little bit longer and then you can ask some questions. July the 29th, last year, I was in a conference and God said to me, read Zechariah and I'll give you the keys to a generation. And I got a little bit nervous with that, but I began to read it. And about September last year, I began to preach out of it. Now, here's one thing I couldn't help myself. Whenever I stood up to preach out of Zechariah chapter four, I had a song in my head. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. But I used to go to Andre Crouch concerts in the Hammersmith Odeon with my wife and sometimes with some of uh, my colleagues out of uh, nursing colleagues. We'd go to Andre Crouch concerts and we'd sing a song. That's the song that's in my head. It's been in my head all along. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. And I had that song in my head, and then I start to talk out of Zechariah. And there's so much in there. But let me give you a couple of headlines. Zechariah 4 verse 1 says this, Then the angel returned to me and aroused me as a man awakened from sleep. I believe the invitation is an awakening. But it's an awakening that has two specific parts. It is an awakening to the fragile nature of humanity without God. And it is an awakening to the one whose name is Jesus, who is referenced in Zechariah chapter 3 as the branch. So the branch is coming. Then we go to Zechariah chapter 4. Don't worry, I'm not going to preach on it for 
but I'm going to give you a few headlines. There's the great image, the bowl and the, all of that weird image, and it's interpreted as this, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. It then goes on to say Zerubbabel has laid the foundations. And this is where I believe we are being taken back to as the church. We are being taken back to our foundations. And then it says the plumb line is in the hand of Zerubbabel and God is happy. Why do I think this is important? I believe it's time for us to build on the firm foundations of who God is, who he says he is, what he has done and who he says we are. It's time to brush those foundations and get back to that. And then it's time to lead out of principles into a world that has been rocked by secularism and, and so many other things that have, we've been facing. Secularism, best definition I've heard, people want the kingdom without the king. I would add to that, they want the nice stuff of Christianity without the Christ. They want to preach heaven without a hell, and they want to save creation without there being a creator. And I believe that we are being taken back to our foundations so that we can be a voice into a postmodern secularist world. And not just that, into a world where the church has been challenged by deconstruction, where the church has been challenged by some of the theological teaching by where the church has been watered down by some of the liberal teaching and i believe we're being taken back to our foundations and at the end of zechariah chapter 4 it says this the sons of fresh oil are standing by the lord of the whole earth it's time for the fresh oil to be poured out so that's where i go to in this season zechariah chapter 4 not by my not by power, but by my spirit. And also in that great chapter, don't despise the day of small beginnings. So I believe that that's where we are. Oh, Paul, you have spoken a word for us all in this season. Now then, if that's you out there, if you are challenged by this, if you have been lost, if you are seeking, like Claire was saying, the strategy of the Lord, then don't go away. We've still got more. And indeed, we've got time for us to stand with you in prayer. Hope.God.tv. We want to pray with you today. Well, Claire, Paul and myself will be right back just after this. Happy birthday to God TV. I am so thankful for your ministry and the courage and the pioneering that you've done to be able to get the gospel on the airwaves all over the world. We're celebrating with you, trusting God for another 25 years, and that many thousands would come to know Christ through the ministry of God TV. Get faith-focused content for every part of your life with hundreds of videos, articles, and more. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Do you know there's a spiritual atmosphere that affects your very life? God Daily has you covered, no matter what season of life you're in. More breakthroughs for you are coming. He's not a God that is restrained in power. He is a God of all power and all might. Sign up today at GodTV.com. Israel is mentioned in the Bible over 2,000 times, and its importance is vital in knowing where we fall on the biblical timeline. God asks us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, promising that those who bless Israel will in turn be blessed. Go to join.theisraelinsider.com to get breaking news on Israel daily. At God TV, we're passionate about Israel and want you to stay informed, knowing what to pray during challenging times. What's happening in Israel? Get breaking news daily. I'm so excited to be a part of this broadcast and to be with two of my absolutely favorite friends. Claire, it's not often that one of our guest speakers quotes your back wall. Um, uh, when, you, <laughs> when, when you hear what Paul is sharing, how, wh wh what's the takeaway? What's the wisdom strategy that our viewers need to, to, to take from what Paul's saying today? Uh, there's so much, there's so much. But for one thing I would say in terms of what Paul was saying, I think ask in Holy Spirit, really. Um, 
to impart that kind of wisdom and understanding, uh, not only to be uh, more strategic, to think more, plan more, but also just asking God. I think Paul was right, you know, there's so many people that say, oh, I'm spirit led, I'm not kind of, I'm not a planner, I'm not a strategist. But actually, you know, he's right, There, there is that marrying up between, uh, between uh, the, the Holy Spirit leading you, and, uh, and allowing you and, and enabling you to understand what God is calling you into and how to go about that and how to plan that. And if you open yourself to the Holy Spirit and just say, you know, uh, come Holy Spirit, just just show me what you want me to do, plan my way. Uh, and if we are diligent and we are steadfast in that, you know, God will show us. He will direct us because he is faithful. Um, absolutely. Just what it says right behind me. He knows the plans that he has for us. Uh, So, you know, sometimes, and even when we feel like we're in the wilderness and, you know, where do we go from here? And what does this mean for us? I think it's just coming back to the word, isn't it? And believing in faith and saying, right, God, I know you have a plan that is good for me. And I am open. Holy Spirit, come and show me what it is that you want me to do. And, And he will. Claire, I'll be honest with you, Paul, as, as we come to the end of this broadcast and we just got to get you back for more and more, I am actually trying not to bore my eyes out just by just hearing the grace that's coming out of your life. We want in a very few minutes to be praying for our viewers. Would you give us one more nugget before I interrupt you and get you to pray for our guys? You know, one of my taglines, uh, I think it is on my life actually, is um, he wastes nothing and he gets you ready. Now that for me is a paraphrase of Romans 8, 28. But I want you today, everybody watching, I want you to believe that for you. He wastes nothing, he gets you ready. It's easy to look at the greats. We've seen them on the screen, the Claudio Friedsons, the Reinhardt Bonkis, all of those people flashing through our screen. It's easy to believe their story. But the real key is, do you believe your story? My last 25 years take me from deputy governor of Feltham to being on the senior team at Bethel to standing on platforms with people like Reinhard Monkey and Jean-Luc Traxel and others. The question is, do you believe your story? And I want you to know this. He wastes nothing. Not one drop of your life's journey will he waste. He will redeem the lows and he will repeat the highs and he will use every drop of it. How could God take a man who learned strategy in a troubled young offender institution and allow me to teach leaders strategic planning and organizational leadership and change management? He wastes nothing, nothing. Not the great tragedies, not the great lows, not the great mistakes. He will not waste them. He will redeem them, and he will use them for his glory. And the biggest key I can give you today is Will you believe your story? Because when you do, it will release authority that you can give away. Oh, Paul, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just segueing very quickly, because I want to make sure you have time to pray over those in need right now. There are several that are praying for healing, cancers and, and back issues and forgivenesses. Those that are needing healing from COVID-19 and protection from COVID-19. There are those who are praying that for deliverance from death today. There are those that have had a successful operation and looking for a, a, a quick recovery. Those who are looking for God's peace. Those who are looking for God's intervention and restoration. And And lastly, those that are facing exams today. Paul, would you pray a blessing? Would you pray answers to prayers that our God TV viewers are facing around the world? Well, Father, your word says that you sent your word and healed. And perhaps there's never been a moment in history where that has meant as much as now. As we send words through the airwaves, and that everybody is dependent on receiving through a screen and not in person. So we embrace that. And today I say, I pray blessing over everyone facing exams and trials and difficulties. I pray protection over everyone who is afraid or suffering for any reason. And I declare the healing power of Jesus over COVID, over musculoskeletal issues, over cancer, 
you say, Father, that you sent your word, would you send your word through my life, through my words, that that which I, would, I have seen with my eyes, you would do again, that infertility would bow the knee to Jesus today, and that you would do again what Sue and I have seen dozens of times of infertile couples being healed and carrying and conceiving full-term babies. So, Father, would you send that? And I declare greater works because Jesus declared it. I declare glory to glory because the Apostle Paul said it. I declare greater revelation because Isaiah said it. And I declare that there will be no end to the increase of your government or of peace in every life in Jesus' name. And night terrors stop now. That lady right now that you're experiencing such night terrors that you're afraid to go to bed, they stop today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if that's you today, and if we as a God TV team can pray for you, then please call the number that you see on the screen. A member of our prayer team, it would be our thrill, our honor to pray for you right now or go to our hope.god.tv website, hope.god.tv. Upload that prayer request and we will be standing with you. We'll be praying for you to see the deliverance even that Paul has declared over all our lives right now. Paul, we've got just a couple of minutes before we leave. I don't know about you, Claire, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm in awe. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, blessed, blessed beyond measure. Sir, how can we connect with your ministry? How can the God TV viewers be, be uh, uh, taking from the gifting that's on your life? And how can we indeed be praying for you at this time? Uh, my website is paulmanwaring.com. And um, on there, I've got, a, um, I've got programs for individuals and I've got a, a team, some team programs for church leadership teams. Uh, I teach strategic stuff. And um, one of the key things I'm, I'm teaching at the moment is revival leadership for church leadership teams. Um, I've written... Uh, a new book's just come out. It's on Amazon. It's on Bethel, um, Things Fathers Do, which is uh, is really encouraging that fathers in the things they do reveal the father. And, um, you know, those those are the, the key ways. You can follow me on social media, the usual Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm fairly easy to find on there. How to pray? I uh, pray that, that my life would have an influx and have an influence. And I think it's one of the biggest keys. Um, I personally believe that big people know who they are, know why they're alive, know where they're going. But the fourth is the one. They know the influence that their life will have. And I and so pray that my life in this moment, specifically for the UK and Europe, that it would have an impact and an influence in these coming days as we come through this crisis. Oh, Paul, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. PaulManWaring.com. I know that's where Claire is going to be spending the rest of her day enjoying <laughs> your website. Claire, thanks so much for joining us today. We love you. Thanks for bringing the, 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 the verse of the day, Jeremiah 29, 11. But to Paul and Claire, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, what a day. What a moment. PaulManWaring.com. I cannot share this testimony on TV, but Paul sat me down about two years ago, maybe three years ago now, and shared a truth with me that absolutely set me free. But until next time on Standing Together with Claire or myself or Ian or Emma, in fact, the whole God TV team, we just want to say how much we love you, we bless you, we honor you in the name of Jesus. And all that Paul prayed today, we believe will manifest in your life. God bless you and shalom. <laughs>